Hi, welcome to The Marketplace. Coming up, total non-performing loans for banks in Ghana reaches more than 20 billion cities for half year as concerns go over the impact on the sector's recovery. Meanwhile, total profits of commercial banks for the first six months of this year witnessed some significant increase. We'll tell you about it. Plus, Ghana to receive about $16 million in carbon trading in 2024. We'll hear from the chief executive of the Forestry Commission, John Alote. For instance, we signed um, uh, an uh, emission reduction payment agreement with the uh, World Bank in 2019 uh, for um, you know, a period of six years, where we can draw down on uh, uh, $50 million. Uh, My name is Daryl Kwao. Details coming up. Don't go anywhere. Thanks for staying with us, everyone. At first up, total value of non-performing loans for banks in Ghana reached a record 20.4 billion Ghana cities. This was captured in the latest Bank of Ghana monetary policy report at the end of July. George Raffi has more. These are loans given out by the borrowers and not meeting the necessary timelines for paying back these credits. When it comes to interest payments and even the principal, it has therefore reached levels that most of the commercial banks are worried that these monies will not be paid back on time. The Bank of Ghana in their report showed that the $20.4 billion stock of non-performing loans ending June this year represents almost 50% jump from what was recorded in the same period for last year. The report linked the spike in the non-performing loans in what the Bank of Ghana describes a deterioration in both domestic and foreign currency loans. The private sector accounted for the largest share of these loans that the banks fear will not be paid back on time. But another worrying aspect of this development is that the high non-performing loans actually impact the extension of fresh loans to businesses out there and even increase the cost of credit on the market. Some are also worried about the impact of this development and the recovery of the banking sector from the shocks of the domestic detection program. Profits of commercial banks for the first six months of this year witnessed some significant increase. New Bank of Ghana data puts the amount at 8.1 billion Ghana cities at the end of June this year. Yes, more. It, however, showed the rate of increase compared to last year's load. According to the Bank of Ghana, this was due to lower increases in interest income and other income lines in 2024 relative to the same period in 2023. Generally, all income lines increased but at a lower growth rate in June 2024 relative to the same period last year. Interest income increased to 18 billion Ghana cities, representing a growth of 19.1% relative to 44.3% in June 2023. When we look at the profits after tax, it increased significantly to 5.4 billion in June 2024. The report by the Bank of Ghana showed that, despite the challenging economic environment, the banking sector was not doing that bad if one restricts itself just to the numbers. All right, let's make sense of the latest figures. Uh, we we'll speak with uh, Dr. Richman Ituahine, who is a banking consultant. Good afternoon to you. And so uh, let's start first with the issue to do with uh, high non performing loans, a record 20.4 billion CDs. Um, how concerning is this figure and what's the trigger? Thank you very much and good afternoon to your cherished viewers. It is cause for concern. It is really cause for concern. The reason being is that the non-performing actually correlates with solvency. The bigger your non-performing, the lower your solvency rate is. Mm -hmm. What it means is that the more we provide for loans as losses, the more you reduce your capital and reserves. So it is really, really concerned, uh, especially when we are just, we think we about to recover from the DDEP and the financial cleaner. Unfortunately, this non-performing has been like an abatross. I'm pushing you back to 2014. 2014 up to 2024, mm. the non-performing ratio has been climbing, climbing, climbing. 
December it was 20.6. Today we're talking about 24.1 or thereabout. I had the earlier person presenting the program say the private sector accounts for a lot. Simple put, simple put in simple terms. The IMF country document, 24 stroke 30 July, no, J April, stated that the government has arrears of 35 billion cities, equivalent to 5% of the GDP, arrears to contractors alone. And then the government has another arrears, $1.6 billion to the IPPS. With all the accumulated uh, 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 arrears, what it does is that it affects the, perform the loans at the bank. Mm. Because these are companies who have gone to borrow money to do government contracts or who have supply electricity or whatever energy to one or the other. And these things have not been paying and it's been climbing. I mean, if you check the data from 2014, we've moved to 2018, we've moved to 20. And if care is not taken, if care is not taken, we're heading for what we call the banking sector di distress because there is every literature, there is a literature which says that in the country whose name performing exceed 10%, that country banking sector is in serious crisis and what, and what are the yeah what are the implications of that if, if uh, there's a banking sector distress you know we have done a banking sector cleanup i think four three four years ago and if we are facing another one just about four years then the issue is really 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 serious those of us who have been following the industry when we hear that you talk about profitability let me digress and tell you why we made, they made profit. Instead of lending to the private sector, they decided to go into treasury bills with a higher return, where you make no provision for loan losses. That is why you see the profitability scaling up. But if you look at the real sector of the economy, credit to the private sector is increasingly going down, mm. meaning that the private sector is supposed to be the engine of the growth. However, it is being staffed of credit because government has borrowed contractors have done job those service providers of ipps have done it they haven't been paid and all those transcend into the higher non-performing that is why i'm saying that we must do something quickly so that we don't end up like 2020 where we did a cleanup what can we do quickly what we have to do government would have to refence the existing debt and give structured payments to the contractors and say that every year, every month, I'm prepared to pay three billion. At least three billion over a one year will reach 36 billion. That will clear the non-energy the non sector. Then the energy sector also is about 1.6 billion multiplied by conservatively 15. That is another 24 billion. That one we need to put structured payment and refinance the existing debt so that the banks who have found themselves in this position will not be afraid because they know that the source of payment will come. But as we begin to write it off, write it off, as you said in your presentation, mm. a 50% increase is a serious astronomical. I mean, no economy recovery will do such a provision. And the insolvency of the banks are also being threatened. I can assure you and tell you, at the end of December, the figures I have from individual banks, if I were to disclose it to you, mm. the, pri the private domestic bank and the SOEs in Ghana, it is nothing to write home about. People were doing as much as 30% non-performing ratio as against the level of 20%. So that is why I'm saying that it must be taken with all seriousness. Those in finance, those in Bank of Ghana, they should work closely to be able to redeem some of these contractors. Dan, Dan, I know a contractor who mm. did a road construction. I have the certificate. He did it in 2020. As I'm speaking to you, he hasn't been paid. Mm. And the man took money from the bank. The bank would have written it off. And that would affect the capital or the solvency. So this issue must be tackled with all the alacrity and speed with experts. Because in 1988, 
We created a system where we have a non-performing asset. What government can also do, can she do, she can look at that model, that model in 1988, and begin to look at that model and see how best we can also have other methodology to resolve this issue. Uh, if Apart from that, yeah. I'm, going, I'm finishing. Apart from that, the way you hear people talking about the banking sector is resilient. Let me make it categorical. Once you have a higher non-performing exceeding 10%, your banking sector is in distress. I say without fear of court favor, because a research done by IMF in 1998 and the revised in 2000, it says what I'm saying. So we shouldn't clap our hands and sitting down there that it is just being written off. And especially those who are providing the data, they must go a bit detailed. If you say private sector, who are the private sector? These are contractors who have taken money. And instead of you telling the truth and saying it, we dance around it. It's yeah. contractors. I have it on record. And I can tell you, I can even mention some of the names. So we must not do what we, we, we see. We will say it. Nemo that non habit. No one claims what he hasn't got. We must not do what we cannot afford to pay. Other than that, we will be destroying the banking sector, irrespective of the guts and what we did three years ago. We cannot do ago. what we cannot afford to pay. And so if you're a banker uh, and you're looking at this, these figures, uh, what would be your approach? And do you see the situation getting any better? That is why I'm giving you an expert and free advice to those who they owe. The Ministry of Finance is aware of what I'm saying. The last time I published this paper, I think two weeks ago, some official from the ministry called me, asking me, and I, sh I, I didn't disclose the, the rate right up to him, mm. because it is, it is an information where I research and pay for. So I didn't give it to him, but I gave him a clue. That's contractor's debt of 35 billion, according to the IMF, not Etuani, it's the IMF document, says 35 billion to road contractors and 1.6. Once we don't make a conscious effort to be able to pay this on time, we will be dealing with insolvency of the banking sector, especially, especially the private domestic bank, including the SOEs, the state institutions. We don't want to go there. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Rich Manitian. I appreciate your time as always. Thank you for speaking with us on the marketplace. Uh, Dr. Rich Manitian is there. A banking consultant. Now, Chief Executive of the Forestry Commission has revealed that Ghana is expected to earn approximately $16 million in 2024 from carbon trading, leveraging the nation's cumulative forest reserves. In an interview with Joy Business, Mr. Alute highlighted the critical role that these forest reserves play in boosting the country's GDP. He made the remarks on the sidelines of a national policy dialogue on the forestry sector in Accra. A lot of, uh, you know, uh, uh, get a lot of revenue from even, uh, uh, you know, carbon trading, for instance. That's huge. For instance, we signed um, uh, an uh, emission reduction payment agreement with the uh, World Bank in 2019 uh, for, um, you know, a period of six years where we can draw down on uh, $50 million. As I speak today, um, we, the president announced at the COP last time that we, uh, we've been able to draw down uh, a little over $4.8 million. This year, we, we are, we, we've uh, drawn down another system. We are going to draw down another 16 million. That is, that is a measurement that have been carried out and uh, validated by the uh, World Bank before they pay. It's not, they don't give you the money, uh, but they rather allow you to do the work. And then when the, the measurements are done and the validation is done, the payment is made. So all these are contributing uh, to um, you know, uh, the accounting, uh, either to all these uh, you know, areas are not uh, captured. Uh, as we speak, the, uh, uh, the, pre the president launched Ghana's document in, uh, at the last COP, you know, COP20, launched the Ghana's document, which clearly specifies what Ghana hopes to do so far as the um, climate change is concerned, so far as the forestry sector is concerned in climate change. One of the uh, 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 things that we've done just around that time is to sign an agreement with the uh, emergent, that's a LEAF coalition, which potentially could rope in about $50 uh, million. Uh, dollars. The, uh, Government of Canada has come in to, uh, to, to also support the uh, United Arab Emirates is engaging as to possibility of signing uh, 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 maybe a document at the uh, New York Climate uh, Week. Um, all these are funds that are coming in. 
largely most of these fans go back to the communities. But these are areas that uh, either to has not been you know, uh, captured uh, by the, uh, the work of the statistical service. And we need to look at all these things. We need to also, as a nation, be able to look at there. If you are, for instance, you are protecting uh, the uh, uh, watershed, you know, you are protecting the watershed, the work you do, most of the, uh, uh, the uh, rivers and our water bodies take their source. Uh, from the forest or go to the forest and they are protected and then we are so all these things how do we capture uh, some of these areas to be able to you know uh, properly uh, present uh, the work that the sector is doing uh, so that is some of the things we are doing how how, how are the uh, uh, local communities benefiting uh, from the uh, 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 forest we have a lot of uh, non uh, forest timber products as well that are taken from the forest we need to capture all these things, to have a proper uh, you know, uh, representation of what happens in the sector. That was Chief Executive of the Forestry Commission, uh, Joseph Alute there. Uh, taking us next to Let's Talk Tech. And joining me, um, as always, our tech pundit, uh, lead for ICE of Africa, Henry Kobler. Good afternoon to you. So the Bank of Ghana has announced plans to intensify its uh, crackdown on illegal lending apps. Tell us about it. Thank you very much, Daryl. So, I mean, generally, if you go to the Play stores, whether for Apple or for Android, you'd realize that there's been a lot more of lending applications that are that are there. I mean, people get to create these applications on the go, especially for the Android applications, um, and then deploy them uh, to the grid and, and to the, the vulnerability of people or citizenry. And you realize that because people are always looking out for um, getting loans uh, from some of these applications, they, they tend to basically download these applications, put in all sort of information which are very critical to them, and then try to get some level of loans. Some do get the loans and are taken to a very uh, terrible process in, 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 that, in that regard, and some do not, but also get to be exploited in there. And, that, and that's what generally the regulator is looking at, to say that, hey, we want to just crack down on, um, on these applications which are um, not regulated, and they generally tend to be not just unethical, but they are also illegal. Uh, how widespread uh, is this problem and uh, what measures do we know is the central bank putting in place? I mean, um, generally you realize that, I mean, it's, 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 it's a no-brainer that you're looking out for people. If you look at the statistics, um, generally from even the, um, the mobile money lending, um, you'd realize that there's been a hike in, in terms of the lending on these applications which are regulated and legal. And so um, taking it off that particular um, ecosystem and then putting out um, mobile applications just to get people to be baited up, um, it, it seems to be really widespread. There's been a lot more um, um, of, of people being frauded in that regard. Um, there's been the, um, the cybersecurity agency has released um, press releases on this and how people basically fall vulnerable to this. Um, I mean, generally, a lot more in, in terms of its sanity uh, needs to be done to make sure that every entity that basically gives out a loan is, first of all, very ethical and, again, is, is in the legal framework and has been regulated enough to, to go through that processes. And so um, I know that the Bank of Ghana relatively has deployed a sandbox um, that, that any application that seeks to um, push in any innovation, whether with lending, whether with blockchain, any of the, the services uh, which comes in terms of payment, uh, you basically have to go through that vigorous process with, with the regulator and then make sure that your application gets to be certified enough to uh, be pushed out and, and be used by people. I think that that's uh, one of the things. But again, um, the security services are also on uh, with the Bank of Ghana to basically crack down on these applications on the Play Stores and get to get them down uh, from, from these Play Stores. I, I mean, how effective, for instance, the sandbox? Um, do you think they'll make any inroads? I've seen quite a, um, a couple of um, works being done about it. Um, I, I was basically there for the lunch, and so I sort of uh, tapped into the whole concept of this sandbox and how people could go through, because it's sometimes very difficult going through with the regulator and, and making sure that all your policies and your implementations uh, and the software is basically you're creating in itself. And, and to be able to even have the financial models to run these uh, is very important. And so um, this sandbox comes in to sort of be that leverage 
uh, in terms of technology uh, bridge between the, the people that are creating these innovations and the regulator. Uh, and I think that it, it would really work. I don't know how far or how many how many uh, people have gone through the sandbox. We don't have any reports so far. But I, from from the three I summit that was that was organized by the Bank of Ghana and DBG, you could realize that there's been that immense push to get people to jump into the sandbox. And um, the fear of some people is that by the time you go through it, you, your concepts uh, would have sort of been traded off and all of that. It, at some level of concerns, I think that the Bank of Ghana should sort of come in. To, to alleviate that that fears for some of the people that are within the uh, the innovative ecosystem and in the tech ecosystem in general uh, to be able to go through and, and get some of these uh, done again uh, I think that the licensing regime also allows that you don't have to always go through the regulator you can always have the top tier guys being able to cover up for you if you you're getting to uh, pushing some of these innovations so I think that they're sort of doing fairly well uh, a lot more education is needed in that regard mm -hmm. and a lot of engagement I would say uh, is needed with the stakeholders in the industry. Well, another headline that caught our attention, so Ghana's ICT uh, reg industry regulator, that's the National Information Technology Agency, NITA, has uh, received three ISOs in the areas of uh, information security, business continuity, and IT service management. Uh, how significant is that? So um, I, I personally am ISO um, implementer, and so I sort of have a vast understanding of what this generally means um, to the industry. I mean, I would say this is long overdue because this was supposed to be the core standardization that um, later would have just jumped on, even from it. I mean, if you're looking at 20,000, uh, ISO 20,000, which is for IT services management, which comes in handy in terms of the fundamental basics of what they are providing, um, that certification and standardization was, was needed from the very start. Um, business continuity always comes in um, to just make sure that the infrastructure, the redundancies, our backups, because NITA, um, I mean, for whatever want you would want to see, um, relative is also managed by a third party. And so, again, to have that, um, the infrastructure being managed by the third party, um, which is smart in FACO. And so to have that confidence in, in it, um, you sort of have these standardizations coming in and business continuity uh, comes to add up to it. For me, I, I saw um, 27,001, uh, the 22,000 edition um, was sort of key for me, especially when we're looking at all these cyber attacks and, and the confidence that somebody would want to run um, uh, the, the applications on NITES service. You're having government agencies uh, applications running on NITES service. Um, security was paramount and so this standardization comes to give it uh, a push to make sure that um, we're having some level of confidence uh, and, and integrity to the data that is sitting there, the availability of this data uh, in terms of the information assets and also being able to satisfy uh, legal and regulatory uh, okay. concepts and even third parties as well. I think that for, for them to get this is a good start. Um, I'm only okay. not looking at them just having policies on paper, mm. but uh, having proper implementations right. of these policies uh, uh, to, to their systems that they have. But it's a good one for, for them. And FOS is, is a good company to deal with uh, and trust their recommendation to ISO. And I think that a good work was done. Henry Kobler, thank you so much uh, for the analysis on the latest tech headlines. I appreciate it. And that's our program, everyone. Thanks for watching. More news on our website, myjohnline.com forward slash uh, business right there in a bit. Uh, you get the day's latest headlines from over there, myjoyonline.com forward slash business, including business confidence dip due to rapid exchange rate depreciation in May 2024. That's according to the Bank of Ghana report we have been talking about uh, this afternoon. So number of advertised jobs goes down uh, marginally, again, from the Bank of Ghana. Thanks for watching. My name is Daryl Kwao. Uh, we'll be back same time uh, tomorrow. But if you have some time, make a date. Masterclass in about a minute. I'll be hosting a discussion on poultry farming. Uh, join 99.7 FM. We'll meet over there.